Hey friends, Sean from Draft Therapy here, and on today's review for you, come into the shadows. All Shadows is an 11.9% Imperial Stout aged in two James Bourbon barrels from Mothfire Brewing Company in Ann Arbor, Michigan. It's been a while since I've reviewed a Mothfire beer here on the channel, but that doesn't mean they've been off my radar at all. Now, Mothfire is doing some of the most inventive beers in the state. And while I've reviewed another BBA stout from them, it's been a while ago, but the last time I was a little underwhelmed. So let's see what all this Shadows stuff has in store. But first, I'd like to thank my executive producers, Brian Kramer, David Jeffries, Vinnie Kent, and Cam Freeman for helping to bring this review to you today. If you'd like to become a producer, help out the channel, or maybe just throw me a couple bucks to buy me a beer, Take a look at my Patreon at patreon.drafttherapy.com where you can get early access to these videos and a few other special perks available only to patrons. Let's take a look at this label. This is a really cool label from Mothfire. Generally what they do is like a gradient style label from one color to the next. This one is pretty much all black with a really dark copper lettering across everything. If we look from the top, we see the geometric moth design. Underneath that, it simply says Mothfire. In the middle, it says All Shadows Imperial Stout Aged in Two James Bourbon Barrels. Underneath that, it says 16 fluid ounces, 11.9% ABV. Across the bottom of the label, it looks like a really like darked out, almost like uh, monarch butterfly wings on the bottom. And then if we turn it to the side here, it says Brewed and Can by Mothfire Brewing Company, 2290 South Industrial Highway in Ann Arbor, Michigan, 48104. And then their motto, Gather Around the Fire and the Government Warning. Now, there's no canned on date on this can. This was just released like a few weeks ago. I know that they were available from the tap room. I've seen it. Obviously, I picked this up at a store. I picked this up at the produce station in Ann Arbor. That's been like recently my go-to for things that I can't get at my other local bottle shop. They have a lot of great stuff there and stuff seems to hang around. Like it's kind of uh, off the beaten path a little bit so people don't really stop there. And, and maybe I just blew up my spot, but let's crack this and put a nose on it. And let's put a nose here. Getting a nice barrel, bourbon barrel characteristic out of it. Maybe a light kind of milky chocolatey note to it. Let's go ahead and pour it. Wow, coming like oil, oil black out of the can, especially out of the mouth of the can through the center of the stream, there is a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit more light that's able to pass through it. But if we sit here, we got about a finger of head. It looks like a coffee colored head. It is starting to dissipate in the middle of the head quite a bit, but the edges are holding on really tightly. If we hold it up to the light here, all I see is my reflection and the lights behind me. I don't see through this at all. I can't see it through it. If I talk about the bulb of the glass, which I do when I talk about stouts or, or porters and I use this kind of glass, I am not seeing. I have to hold it really up to the light there to see any kind of color whatsoever. The head is still holding on. It looks like, again, a co nice coffee colored head. The bubbles are super tight out of the nose the nose on the glass wow i can't even talk it has a really has that bourbon characteristic there is a bit of an oakiness that comes out as well roasty dark fruit you know uh a little bit of a sweet chocolate aroma as well i'm ready to dive right in now the head's starting to dissipate and i can see the beer through here cheers we always start with the mouthfeel the mouthfeel is a little bit on the heavy side it's not quite syrupy but it does have a thickness to it. It definitely washes over your tongue, kind of sticks on there. Um, but yeah, just really nice and nice thick, but not syrupy, like not super light, but not has, has a nice heaviness, a nice thickness, but again, not syrupy at all. Let's talk about the flavor. Cheers. So right at the upfront on the onset of the flavor, I'm picking up a lot of dark fruit notes. I'm getting a nice kind of roasty malty flavor. There's a bit of a light chocolate in there as well. Once you start to swallow it, that's when that bourbon characteristic comes through. You get more of that kind of barrel, a little bit of an oakiness. There is a bit of a, a little bit of like an alcohol sting to it. And then on the finish, there's a, a flavor that comes through. It's almost like it kind of reminds me of like a clove or like a black licorice kind of flavor a little bit. You get a light, nice sweetness, nice dark fruit flavor up front. 
like I said, you get that bourbon characteristic. There's a really, like you get a sweet chocolate in the upfront too, but after the swallow, again, you're getting kind of a cloviness on the very finish, like as it kind of sits on my tongue and the aftertaste is a bit of a clovey black licorice, but as it goes down, it's like a, like a, like a chocolate, I was going to say sweet chocolate, but it's more of like a, a dark uh, baker style chocolate, like a, like a little bit of a bitter chocolate, but it's definitely cocoa has a nice chocolate flavor in there. So you're getting a little bit of a sweeter chocolate with that, with that dark fruit, I almost said stone fruit, but you're getting like dark fruit, a little bit of a sweet chocolate. You're getting a little bit of that bourbon characteristic, the oakiness on the finish. You're getting, uh, that's when you're getting a little bit more of a dark fruit, but a little bit of a, of a darker, deeper, richer chocolate flavor in there. As I kind of swish it around on the finish, like after this, or, you know, right before the swallow, it does, the mouthfeel starts to like morph into this bit of a creaminess and it opens up and there is a little bit more of a, as I swished it around on the aftertaste now, there is a little bit more of an alcohol kind of clarity to it. There's a little bit more of a stingy to it, but it's not a burn. There's no burn that goes down your chest. There's no burn that really hangs out on your tongue. It just kind of feels like it opens up your taste buds a little bit. Almost has like a, it, it even, it tastes like it's just keeps, taste, it tastes like it keeps changing on me. Like I'm, now I feel like I'm almost picking up on a bit of a, maple-y kind of flavor in there as well, but I'm still getting the, the stone fruit, the bitter chocolate that I got on the first couple drinks on the aftertaste, on the finish. I'm not picking up so much on now. It almost is coming through a little bit sweeter. As the beers, okay, there it is again. As the beers kind of opened up, it's had a chance to breathe a little bit. It's starting to pick up different characteristics. That bourbon is in there, that oakiness is in there. That's obviously the feature of this beer. And that's definitely there, it's, but it's not overpowering. It's a really nice balance. It's a nice balance, like you're getting the sweetness up front. You're getting that, that's when, you know, in the middle is where you're starting to get the bourbon flavor, the, the, the oaky kind of characteristic on the finish. You're getting a little bit of a sweetness, but a little bit of a chocolate bitterness too as well. So it's very interesting. It's a very interesting kind of morphing style beer, right? As it kind of opens up. I, I don't know the last time I've had a, a, a bourbon barrel aged stout like this that's really changed that much over time. Like obviously as it warms, sometimes it can take on different characteristics, but this one is almost changing like by the second. It's not so much just when it's warmed up or just as it's opened up, you know, letting more air in, but it's just kind of overall things are changing. The, the upfront is still the same, but it's the finish that's changed a little bit. I mean, Mothfire taking risks again or, or doing inventive styles again, I'm not surprised. Uh, the, the last bourbon barrel aged stout I had from them was Steep, which I wasn't super impressed with, but this one was definitely a redemption. I really enjoyed this one. And uh, I think if you're a bourbon barrel you know, aged stout guy, especially a Two James bourbon barrel fan, this is a no brainer, definitely a pickup. Uh, if you're not into the style, I don't know if it's something that you'd want to pick up. I don't know if you'd even be watching this video, but I can definitely tell you if you're a bourbon barrel aged stout kind of person, uh, this is definitely a must buy. All right, friends, that's been all shadows from Mothfire Brewing Company out in Ann Arbor. Mothfire, if you're watching, get in contact. Let's do some video from your tap room. I'd love to talk more about your beer. So have you had this beer before? Is Mothfire in your distro area or is there a Mothfire beer that you've seen either here or other places that you're looking to try? Let me know in the comments down below while you're down there. If you like beer, you might want to subscribe and click that bell. I'm here talking about beer twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's all for free for viewers just like you. And you might miss your newest favorite if you're not subscribed and you get those notifications. So until next time, I'm Sean from Draft Therapy. Thanks for stopping by. Remember, drink craft beer, support your local breweries. These guys are in Ann Arbor. And most importantly, don't forget to treat yourself to a little draft therapy. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time. Mothfire, get in touch. Cheers. <laughs>